Are you ready for a major breakthrough in your business? Are you hungry for growth and ready to take massive action? Tony Robbins has invested more than 40 years into consulting the most accomplished organizations and business leaders. His exclusive Business Mastery program is the culmination of everything he has learned and assimilated in that process. In this immersive five-day boot camp program, you will learn from Tony and other leading business experts how to uncover the critical factors impacting your business right now. Then refocus and realign with the business strategy you need for competing in any economy. You will leave this groundbreaking program with the essential tools to shape your business and drive it to incredible success. So harness your hunger, let go of your fears, and take your business to the next level at Business Mastery. Admission is extremely competitive and exclusive. Visit www.tonyrobbins.com slash business mastery to see if you qualify. Space is limited, so only qualified business owners will be approved. As a business owner, what is the most stressful thought you have? What keeps you up at night? Is it a fear of failing? Anxiety about the future? worries about hiring or firing? Every business owner will inevitably face daunting challenges that he or she must overcome. It's just the nature of the beast. But the stressful thoughts, the worries that we conjure up in our minds about the unknown, these are not only impacting your emotional state, they're hindering your path forward. And it's up to you to make the decision to take back control of your thoughts, adopt a stronger, more focused mindset, and step into the role you were meant for. Hey guys, welcome back to the Real Breakthrough series on the Tony Robbins Podcast. I'm Annie York, Editorial Director for RRI. In this episode, we're taking you back to Business Mastery, where Tony is working with business owners who have given in to their negative beliefs, allowing their thoughts to hinder their path to growth. Tony helps them understand that the challenge they must overcome is their own psychology. He shows them that these thoughts are ultimately just machinations of their greatest fears, and that they only have power if you believe them. But if you are ready to step out of these limiting beliefs, you must adopt the steadfast mindset and the unshakable state of a true leader so that any negative thought that arises is immediately dismissed and any challenge that comes your way is seen as an opportunity to grow. The thoughts that you call your thoughts are not your thoughts. They are the mind, not your mind, the mind. I know this sounds simplistic, but if you can start to identify that thoughts don't hurt you, it's the thoughts that are stressful that you believe that hurt you. So for example, coming back to my couple, where'd you guys go? What, tell me what was one of your most stressful thoughts? Give them both a big hand again, please. Oh, a big hand, ladies and gentlemen, for God's sakes. So tell me, Travis, what's one of your most stressful thoughts? Uh, for me, I think uh, I've realized that with this, I have to get away from being an operator and being an owner. Yes. That's really it. It's, that'll change. There's no question that'll change everything. But tell me what's the most stressful, ongoing, recurring thought you have? Adding employees. What about uh, adding employees? You, you, you're trying to find the, the, the quality ones. You're trying to find a, a package that uh, entices the right people to come to you. But that's not the stressful thought. What's the stressful thought about adding employees? All the headache that comes with it and they bring to the shop with them. So now I want you to understand this. Write this down. All beliefs carry with them consequences. All beliefs carry with them consequences. For these two to grow a business and for him to become a business owner, not an operator, is he going to probably need to hire more people, yes or no? Yet he believes a stressful thought that says, if you do bring on more people, it's just going to bring on more problems, more drama. If he believes that, then he won't do the very thing he needs to do to grow his business. The chokehold is his psychology. Mm-hmm. Raise your hand if you hear it. Who here gets really excited about hiring people because it means more freedom, more leverage? Who's in that place, right? Right? Some of you say that till you hire people, then you're like, what the <laughs> Like, who here ever said, I want a relationship? And then you got one and said, I don't want a relationship. (laughs) Who's ever had this experience? (laughs) So this thought that bringing more people in my life stressed me out, who else has had this thought in some context of your life that bringing more people in life is going to create more stress for me and more problems? Raise your hand. 
Keep your hands up and I want you to look around the room. This is not a unique thought. This is a thought many people have. Give me another stressful thought you have. What's another one that dominates you? She's reminding him of the one that stresses him. <laughs> no, I'm, I'm saying put it here. Oh, yes. so, I can, so, so you can hear me. Okay. Um, a, a thing is, the underperforming with the, the business. You're, you have, so, you have so many employees, you have to perform. They rely on you to make the right decisions. So, and so the stressful thought is what? If a failure, underperform, you fail. Okay, I'm, I'm, the stressful thought is what if I fail? What if we underperform? What if we have all these people and then we don't succeed? Who here has ever thought, holy f I've got a lot of people, or holy f what if we fail? Who's had these thoughts before? Let me see your hands. Look around the room. Yeah, not unique. Okay, is this a unique thought, yes or no? Yeah. Is this his thought, yes or no? Yeah. If it's his thought, what the f are you doing thinking his thoughts? <laughs> Tell me one of your most stressful thoughts. <laughs> your turn. Tell me what's one of your most stressful thoughts. Um, it will be not become an owner and be forever an operator. So my stressful thought is going to forever be an operator, forever stressed out, but that's new language. Give me the thought you've had in the past before you heard that language. What's another stressful thought? Th that I have to work super hard and not able to have freedom. Okay, I'm gonna have to work super hard and I'm never gonna be free. Mm -hmm. Who's had the fear that you're gonna have to work super hard and in the end you won't get free? Let me see your hands. Keep your hands up around the room. Please look at the percentage of the room that has had these thoughts. I have not heard a single unique stressful thought so far. <laughs> Someone else, raise your hand and tell me your most stressful thought. Yes, ma'am, what is it? If I spend less quality time with my kids and more just because being more time working all the time. So the stressful thought is I'm always gonna be working, I'm not gonna have enough time with my kids or if I have time with my kids, my business will suffer. Who has had this thought before? Let me see your hands. Keep your hands up, look around the room. I'm looking for a unique stressful thought. I'm looking for a thought that not everybody has. Come on, there's got to be one out there. Yes, ma'am, what's your most stressful thought? I don't speak good English. I don't speak good English. That was pretty good English. I don't, I don't communicate well, and um, I don't write well. So I don't speak well, and I don't write well. And, and, therefore, I, and I don't have a business degree. And I don't have a business degree. And therefore... Therefore, stress me out, even though I have a multi-million dollar business. I have a multi-million dollar business. Don't confuse my success with my fears. <laughs> How many of you are relatively successful or very successful, but you still have these thoughts that come in and out of you constantly? Let me show hands. So here's what most people believe. Someday, when I get my business to earn a certain amount, someday when I have the right people, someday when we have enough net profitability, someday when I'm finally wealthy, someday when X happens, then I'm gonna enjoy my life thoroughly. And it won't happen. Because all it takes is for you to think a stressful thought and believe it. Who here has ever had the thought, I'm gonna kill that <laughs> Raise your hand if you've had this thought before. Nice and high, look around the room how many people have done it. Now, let me tell you the good news. Here's the good news. You can have any thought. The only ones that hurt you are the ones you believe. Now, most of you didn't believe you were gonna kill that I hope, <laughs> because you didn't kill them. So it was just the thought. But if you believe the thought, you will stress. How many understand what I'm talking about here? Say I. So the ability to make the most important decision of your life, which we talk about in other seminars, but I wanna plant the seed to remind you that have been with me before and those haven't maybe plant a seed. That success without fulfillment is the ultimate failure. And what makes you unfulfilled is you have a two million year old brain that's always looking for what's wrong. It's never gonna stop doing it. So you have to step out of the survival software and make a decision that says life is too short to suffer. And all that is is fear and frustration and worry, believing those thoughts produces suffering. If you didn't have that thought, what if you didn't have the thought, what if I hire all these people and then we don't succeed? What if you didn't have that thought? What would you feel then if that thought didn't exist? Complete freedom. Freedom. Let go of that thought. <laughs> you 
you have freedom that fast. It's just a habit. Raise your hand if you follow this. But you will continue to think those thoughts when you allow yourself to go into certain identities. And the reason I went off on this little tangent for a moment, it's not a tangent, it's your life. The strongest force in any human being's personality, the strongest force in your personality, mine too, is the need to stay consistent with how we define ourselves. And every one of you in this room have defined yourself in some way. If you don't get under it, that's what controls you. If you think you're a crazy mofo, you're gonna do shit other people won't do. If you think you're extremely conservative, you're not gonna do any of that shit, even though you're capable. You'll say, I'm not one of those. And identity is everything. For example, if someone stops smoking and they go, I'm on day six of not smoking, why are they counting? Why are they counting? Tell me. So they can tell you how long they last when they go back. So I always say, if you're counting, there's no future. If I came to you and you stopped smoking and I say, would you like a cigarette? Would you say, what brand is it? <laughs> no, you'd say, I'm not a, I'm not one of. When you're not one of those, there's no internal conflict. You don't smoke cigarettes. When you're counting the days, you're fighting it, but it's still who you are. Raise your hand if you follow that difference. So what triggered me on this is you saying something that I'm sure has been a way of you being humble, a way of you being warm, a way of you connecting with people, a way of not coming across arrogant. I see the positive intent with I'm a dumb farm boy from Idaho, right? But it's a horrible habit for you to tell because then unconsciously that became his real limit. Because think of it this way. If you set the thermostat in this room at 69 degrees, and 69 degrees is a metaphor for your comfort zone, not your goals, your comfort zone. 69 degrees is how much money you're comfortable with. It's not what you want. It's not enough. It's what you're used to, right? 69 degrees is how much connection with each other or with your relationship or intimacy or how close you are to God. Let's say that's the measurement. 69 degrees is how fit you got to be to be comfortable, not what you want, not your goal, your comfort zone, what you know. So if the thermostat in this room said it's 69 degrees and the temperature drops to 68, 67, 66, but once it gets to a certain level, if it's said it's 69, it's usually around 65, 64, what happens if the temperature drops? The computer goes, hey, this is not good enough. I'm a 69 degree, what the hell am I doing here at 64? And the heaters kick on, and you do something to get back to where you believe you're supposed to be. Who's ever done this? Who's ever, things didn't go well, and you let it go, you let it go, until finally something hit you. You hit a marker that's like, this is changing now, and everything kicked in gear. Who's done this before? Say, ah. Aye. Say, ah. Aye. You know the crazy thing? It happens on the other side, too. So if you're a 69-degree Idaho boy, you know, is not that smart, but I'm doing okay, in spite of not being so smart. Look at him smiling when, he, when I'm talking about it, because he's used to using this as a connection tool. Nice connection tool, horrible business tool. Because <laughs> what happens if... If you get back up and you start doing better than you expected, you think you're 69 degrees financially. It's not your goal, it's what you're used to, physically, relationship, God. And you start going 75 degrees, 78, 80, 85, 92 degrees, all of a sudden the brain goes, hey, 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 
the hell are you doing up here? You're not a 92 degreeer. You're a 69 degreeer. Get your ass where you belong. And what the first thing that happens when you do better than you expect, the heaters stop and you lose your drive. Now all of a sudden you're shopping instead of selling. Now all of a sudden you're hanging out because you've surpassed your comfort zone. Not your goal, your comfort zone, what you're used to. And then if the stopping the heaters, the drive is not enough, the air conditioners will kick in and bring you right back down to where you deserve to be and you'll actually sabotage. You don't do it consciously, you do it unconsciously. You're not beating yourself up, you're just trying to meet what you know. Now most of you know that most of us have a set point in our bodies, a certain weight set point, that no matter what you eat, most of you will come back to that set point. It's the same thing, it's your comfort zone. If you don't shift that identity, you can fight, you can make progress for a while, you always come back. So the identity, Travis, that you create for yourself, again, I see the intent, but it's horrific. And I think what you really need to decide is who am I today? Better than that. Is there a crazy in there, Travis, who can rip things open if he's committed, regardless of his background in Idaho? But I want you to understand, every person in this room, when you were born, and you're a baby, what can you do? What can you be? What can you experience as a baby? What? Anything, you're wide open. But then every one of us went through a conditioning process where we learned we had to be a certain way in order to have the love or at least the respect that we want from the source of love that matters most to us. So watch this. Whose love did you crave most growing up, Travis? Your mother or your father? You, I'm sure you love them both, but whose love did you crave more? My father. Your father. And tell me, who did you have to be for your father without hesitancy? First thing that pops to mind, I had to be? More disciplined. More disciplined. What else did you have to be for your father? Uh, strong. Strong. What else did you have to be? Disciplined, strong, what else? And kind to my younger brother. Kind to your younger brother, even when he was an asshole. Well, I was. Yes, Okay. <laughs> But you still had to be kind to your younger brother. Yeah. What else did you have to be for your father? You had to be strong, had to be successful, had to be kind. What you else did you have to be? You had to be responsible, reliable. We had, had to be we responsible had, for and, and reliable. We were at a farm. had to be responsible, reliable, smart, strong, nice to my brother. Did you have to be a nice guy? You had to be nice to your brother. Did you have to be a nice guy? I think it probably carried over. You know, just, just behavior carried over, yeah. Yeah, because it's what was expected. Mm -hmm. If you weren't nice to your brother, if you weren't strong, if you weren't successful, if you weren't all those things, oh, look at that, look at his face. Did you see that? Is that on camera? Watch, the answer to what's going on is in the people's faces. So what would happen if you weren't that way with your father? Um, yeah, he wasn't very happy. No. no. How would he respond if he wasn't very happy? Well, we were on a farm, so there was a lot of hard work to do. Yes. And I found the tail end of a shovel quite a few times. Yes. So he figured out how to punish you with more work? Is that true? Sure. So I want you to notice, he's wired into his nervous system, more people leaks, more work. His history of more work is punishment. So getting more people to grow my business will just mean more work and punishment. So he goes back to his childhood and he runs the same pattern and then goes, how come we know what to do but we're still not doing it? So then he blames himself and says, well, I'm just a dumb farm boy from Idaho. When he's not, he's a very smart man. How many can feel this? Yeah. Right? Yeah. But he doesn't want to go back through what he's already gone through. Who could you never be for your father? You could never be, first gut response, I could never be, Oh, I could be a failure. I couldn't yeah. fail. No. And yet, do we all fail in life at times, yes or no? So I can't fail, I gotta be nice when I'm not, I gotta be strong when I don't feel like it, I gotta be all these things that I'm not all the time or I won't have the respect or love that I crave most in life. So what did you do? Did all the right things, you did what you were supposed to do. Did all the right things, what you're supposed to do. Be a good guy, do the right thing, or it's just gonna be more work. How many see the pattern, right? But T-Rex, if I ask T-Rex what's life about, T-Rex would say life's about what? It's about success, about winning, about, about uh, being on top. Yes, 
tell me two or three things that you two are gonna do to go grow this business by at least 20% in the next year or 30, even though you've not been through the course yet. We're just starting it. Yeah, right now we're gonna hire a, a CEO. Gonna hire a CEO? Or a general manager of some sort to help general push, manager, good. take some of that uh, responsibility. Yeah, Get so someone else will have some of the responsibility to do some of the work, which moves him towards being an? Owner. An owner, right? Tell me another thing you're gonna do. It'll grow the business. We've got to add more people. You've got to have more people. Now, I want you to notice this. When one part of your brain is saying, I got to get more people to succeed, and the other part of your brain says, I get more people, we're going to have more problems, then what happens is the brain doesn't know what to do, so he does nothing. Mm -hmm. And then says, but that's because I'm a dumb farm boy. He's not a dumb farm boy. He's a man who's believing his stressful thoughts. And I have stressful thoughts, too. And when I start to feel them, you'll know they're there because you feel tension in your body. The minute I've trained myself, I feel tension. I go, okay, what's the stressful thought? And then I go, look at that stupid thought. That's not my thought. I wonder how many millions of people have thought this thought before me. It's the mind. It's that two million year old survival software and that is not me. That is a tool that I need to use. If you're gonna take over your business, you're gonna to have to master your mind and the way to master your mind is to start to question the thoughts you've been accepting and stressing about. You can only feel the feeling if you don't question it. Are you, is it true that you're a dumb farm boy from Idaho? Is that really your core identity? No. No. So then when you believe that thought, when you say that thought and believe it, because you've said it enough times, you believe it at times, mm -hmm. what does it make you feel when you believe that thought? Well, I'd have to really believe it first. Yes. And if you start to believe it, if you start to oh, do it. It's going to slow you down. It's going to shut you off. Yes. You're going to fail. And if that thought's not, if the thought didn't exist, if I no longer had the thought, if I never ever said that again, I'm a dumb farm boy because you've said it for a lot of years. Yes. True? Yeah. It's not new. Yeah. Yes. It's an old idea. Yeah. If you just let go of that thought, you never said it again, never spoke it again, never had that thought again, or you did, you went out, oh, it's an old thought, that's such Look at that thought going by. What a crazy ass thought. That wasn't even my thought. I wonder who first thought of that thought. Probably 100 years ago, 1,000 years ago, some idiot thought that shit. Now I'm letting it come in me? No more. I give myself 90 seconds. I call it my 90 second rule. In 90 seconds, I let it go by and I focus on something I can appreciate. Because when you appreciate something, you get out of suffering. What's something I can appreciate? What's something I can enjoy? What's something I can give? But I give myself 90 seconds. Now in the beginning, I probably should have called it my four hour rule. <laughs> but I've done it enough now that it really does take less than 90 seconds. It's like building a muscle. It's like you get out of it right away. If you don't get out of these things, it won't matter what I teach you over the next five days. These thoughts will believed will keep these two from growing their business. Or it'll create a conflict. He'll feel bad and apologetic and she'll, you know, want to do certain things, but she won't want him to feel bad. So then she'll have internal conflicts with her. What's one of your most stressful thoughts? Well, the second, that will be that the things get out of control in my organization. Like yes, things will get out of control. Aren't they already out of control? No. <laughs> no. Really? They're in control right now. Your business is running exactly how you want without you being there. Can be better. Could be better. Uh -huh. Yeah, that, that means it's out of control. <laughs> but I want to grow more. I yes. want to grow more every, every year more. So what did I say to you this morning? That in order to grow your businesses, you're going to have to face your fears and you're going to have to break through the limitations of your current threshold of control. Both of these have a low threshold right now, right? If I get people, this will go. If this happens, this will go. They've got all these stressful thoughts and the stressful thoughts are keeping them from executing. Raise your hand if you can see this. Say, I. So how do we switch it? The way you switch it is you put a different person in charge within you. We aren't one personality. How many of you got a crazy mother in there someplace? Let me see your hands. Say, I. I. How many have an unstoppable part of you that if you kick it in gear, you will push through anything? Raise your hand. Say, I. I. How many got a playful part of you that can laugh at little and big if you want to? Say, I. I. Here's the challenge. We generalize about who we are, and we get in the habit of having an identity, and the guy that's the dumb farm boy from Idaho, which is not really what he's saying, what he's really saying is I'm not arrogant, I'm a warm person, I don't think my doesn't stink, I'm a, I'm a good guy, I'm likable, and you know, I'm gonna work hard. That's what he's really saying. 
but he came up with this technique for describing himself years ago. That guy can never run this business. Raise your hand if you follow this. So you gotta select which part of you is gonna run the business. So for me, my nature is give, give, give. So my nature, if you're familiar with From Date With Destiny, we had this spiritual distinction with colors. Some of you know if I talk about green or red. So I was very green. I'd give everything away. But I'd go deal with somebody that was red, like it's kind of like swimming with a shark and wanting to please them. They're going to take an arm or leg of yours. You have to put the right person in charge of your business. You gotta find that guy, T-Rex, he's gotta run it. The guy that sat over there, the gone guy, he'll never get this business where it needs to go. And he'll never really be fully fulfilled because he's living in an old identity from a long time ago. So T-Rex says we're gonna hire a CEO. T-Rex says, Hire more people, add more I'm gonna hire more people. And what does T-Rex says about hiring more people? What if, they, what if they're not the right people? What will T-Rex do? <laughs> Good. <laughs> And by the way, do you have to hire and fire a lot of people to find your team, yes, yes. or no? Yes. yes. Look, I've been, one of the reasons I'm successful in what I do is my 40th year doing it. So in 40 years, I got people been with me 27 years, 25 years, 20 years, 10 years, five years. But I had to go through a lot of people to do that. So what I learned is my chokehold was I want to make everybody happy and I would stay with people way too long. And what I began to realize is they could be a client, they're not gonna be my partner in business, right? Let them become a client and we'll work with them and help them be better. But I need, if you're playing with Michael Jordan, you gotta step up, right? And so I got the right team. So what I would do is stay with people way too long because I wanna coach them and help them and not, we don't do that anymore. Now I realize that hurts my platinum players, my top players, they carry the bronze players. How many follow what I'm talking about? and it's unfair to them. So now what I do is I hire slow and I fire fast, right? I take time to really dig in, try to understand who this person is. Once we hire them, real clear rules, real clear rewards. If they can't do it, we get them coaching. If they can't do it with the coaching, we get them out right away. So we get faster to the ideal person and we can make more and more distinctions. Can T-Rex do that? Oh yeah, yeah absolutely. By the way, did you see that? Oh yeah, no problem. No, no problem. T-Rex has no problem. Gone, he has a real problem. Right? Put the guy in charge that runs the business. Give him a hand, T Rex. Give him a hand. Give him a hand. The Tony Robbins Podcast is directed and hosted by Tony Robbins. Anna York is our editorial director and occasional host. Our executive producer is Carrie Song. Jamie Carvajal and Adriel De La Torre are our digital editors. Special thanks to Mary Buckheit and Diane Adcock for their creative review.